What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. So I'm giving another run at this video. Um, I have the right to speak on this topic just as well as any white person. You understand? And so I will thusly do that. I first begin by reminding you that you need to go and click on the link in the description box down underneath this video and immediately go over and subscribe to me on Black Junction TV as we begin to uh, land and begin to move ourselves slowly away from this platform completely. On Black Junction TV we're able to speak freely, we're able to have our opinions and exercise our free speech with no interruption from fragile ass white people. So let us do that. They can be happy and we can be happier. Alright, <clears throat> now this is fine for me because actually there's been a development in between uh, me putting out that video and then pulling it down and then now because at that time there was no they were saying in that article and I'm gonna reread that article that they would not release the identity of the shooter alright uh, gunman identified as Jared Ramos uh, five dead in Capitol Gazette shooting in Annapolis alright <gasps> excuse me all right, there he is in all of his glory <clears throat> excuse me there he is All right. Um, I'm also going to be uh, talking about Congresswoman Maxine Waters in this as well because she's under uh, death threats and so forth <clears throat> from these damn devils. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna uh, do the details of that as well in this video. But I want to go back to where I began in my last video, and this will make it easier because now I've actually read the article which is something you guys know I don't ever do but because I had produced that video obviously I'm familiar with the information so that will save us time as we go through this in fact I can really just do my summation really um, but we'll still we'll still go through it alright five dead in targeted atta targeted attack at Capital Gazette news paper in Annapolis now I had a Im immediately issue with that because when I first searched this which I can't do it for you now because um, it won't be the search won't be the same but when I first ever looked this story up um, I had had a long night um, a long day actually yesterday uh, in total and I woke up tired and then it was just one of those days and I had other stuff I had to do and then I, anyway at some point during the day I fell asleep and went into one of those deep coma sleeps and so whenever I woke up then I was going to the kitchen and I noticed the TV was on and I seen that there was something going on that looked like it was probably something like this but I thought maybe it was file footage or if it was something you know I just I didn't pay any attention all right so but then when I checked my MSN page that's when I realized oh this is really something that's going on all right so when I put in my initial Google search the thing I kept noticing on every one of them I'll just give you an example of what I'm talking about even it won't be the same um, what is what I'm trying to illustrate when I did the original Google search like this all of these as you went down had two key words in it one was um, gravely injured I noticed no matter what the publication they were using that and all of them were saying targeted attack and I took issue with it because it's one thing for 20 people to tell the same story or to talk about the same event but for those same 20 people to use the exact same language is always suspect and I always tell you when something becomes a pattern it's no longer a coincidence it is on purpose alright so that was the first thing that stood out to me when I was just trying to even find an article to bring to you so that we could cover the story alright fine <clears throat> now uh, let's let this reload okay the page is still not fully reloaded but whatever um, I can just begin my commentary while we're waiting for it my overall issue is I have an issue with this everybody and I'm gonna be using this article to illustrate why there's things about this that have me doubting its validity you know in recent times we are seeing an escalation or maybe even just the visibility maybe there hasn't been so much of an escalation maybe it's been consistent but with social media and all that stuff we're seeing more visibility of these random mass shootings on schools on theaters on malls on you know 
military bases and you know down the list you go so what always seems to be suspect for me is sometimes timing the the YouTube is is overrun with videos of people doing conspiracy videos about um, crisis actors and all those sorts of things you know so this isn't like some new brilliance coming from the Jedi um, this is this is a held point of view by many uh, out in the lexicon or the stratosphere if, if you will so this one stands out in that light for me because of some inconsistencies in things that were being reported now it says gunmen blasted let me bring this in so we can all see it says gun a gunman blasted his way into the Capitol Gazette newsroom in Annapolis when a shot with a shotgun Thursday afternoon killing five people all right journalists divided under the or dived under their desk and, and I hope this hasn't changed since I read it the first since I did it the first time let me just kind of scan down uh, wait uh, it might have y'all let me see if it says updated contact reporter there's no usually when they update an article they will say update it you know and they'd give you the time and all that stuff all right whatever we're just gonna go through it all right um, journalists dived under their desk and pleaded for help on social media one reporter described the scene as a war zone a photographer said he jumped over a dead colleague and fled for his life now that was not in the pre in this the first time that I read through it all right yeah, there was no mention in that first one about anybody jump, jumping over a dead colleague. All right, the victims were identified, and now they're identifying victims that that was not identified in the first the first time that this article. In other words, this has been updated. This is the same article, this from the Baltimore Sun, but it's been updated. All right, I can tell you that because I read it already, and this is not the what I read. All right. Uh so we won't labor over um, names of victims. All right, two others were injured at the in the attack that began about 2:40 p.m. at the Capitol Gazette office at 888 <clears throat> Bestgate Road in Annapolis. Police took a suspect into custody soon after the shooting. He was identified as Ger Gerald W. Ramos. Now I want to say stop and say this. When I first read through it, it said police said they will not release, and I took issue with that. Because I was citing for you how recently in Baltimore we covered the case of the four uh, African teens who were uh, being pursued or not pursued, whatever the case was, by this white police officer they end up running over and they're being tried as adults. And I was taking issue at that point, even in that video about they were releasing the names and da 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 and I was contrasting that to this to say, so this guy goes in and shoots. Uh, he's 30 years old. He's not underage. He's 30 something. What do they say? Oh, he's 38. All right. At the time, they were just saying 30. But he's 38 years old. He goes in and shoots up a newspaper, and the police were saying they won't release. All right. That's what they were saying in the article the first time. But clearly now, he's been identified. All right. This was a targeted attack on the Capitol Gazette. Uh, said and said Anne Arundel County Deputy Police Chief somebody all right this person was prepared to come was prepared today to come in he was prepared to shoot people local state and federal law offices my voice is going y'all I apologize local state and federal enforcement officials cordoned off uh, the Laurel apartment complex listed as the address for Ramos Thursday evening hmm Laurel. I need you guys to know that I actually bought my Honda in Maryland, in Laurel, Maryland, when I lived in Maryland. Um, Ramos, wait, wait. Thursday evening. Okay, Ramos's dispute with the Capital Gazette began in July of 2011. See, this is all new. All right, when a columnist wrote about a criminal harassment case against him, he brought a defamation suit against the columnist and the organization's editor and publisher. A court ruled in the Capitol Gazette's favor and an appeal court 
upheld the ruling. I want to stop and say this. See, in my first video, I was saying when they were saying they won't release the name, I was already making the tie up. I was like, they know who this guy is. This, I, and I was making the point. I was saying because when these people do these shootings, it is specific targets for specific reasons. You know, if they just had some just desire to just go kill people, then they could just walk into the local grocery store and open fire, you see? And so that didn't, that it, it didn't ring true to me that they didn't know who he was. Or, or I was saying they must know who he is because this is the newspaper. So either he knew somebody there or he worked there or he had been there, something. And I was saying they know who this dude is, you know? And so why wouldn't they release who he is? That was my 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 angle in the before we had this information, all right, it, which that still stands because at that time they weren't doing it. Just because they're doing it now doesn't change what my thoughts were then. You know, I had to work with what I I was working with what I had to work with at the time. All right, that's what I'm trying to say. Where am I? Neither the columnist Eric Hartley nor the editor and publisher Thomas somebody are still employed by the Capitol Gazette. They were not present during the shooting. I want to stop and say this because I have to teach as I go. Remember you guys, I always tell you, I'm always saying when when we find something that we read and I have real issue with it, I go, that didn't get there by accident, everybody. Remember that. I go, remember everything has an editor, a publisher, and a writer. You always hear me ranting about that. So there it is. Neither the columnist nor the editor and publisher, you see what I'm saying? are still employed at the Gazette. Police said the suspect used smoke grenades in the attack. They said 170 people were inside at the time. All right, here's the issue that I had. Uh, let's see, Phil Davis. Okay, Phil Davis, crime reporter, who was in the building at the time of the shooting, said multiple people were shot and he and others hid under their desks. He said there was a single male gunman. Excuse me. Um, and I was also pointing out how in all these, it's always, we hear this, they put this image in your head of this shadowy, nondescript, lone shooter. You feel me? It, like, it's always that in these cases. Um, gunman shot through the glass door and, to the office and opened fire on multiple employees, he wrote on Twitter. Can't say much more and don't want to declare anyone dead, but it's bad. End quote. Uh, let's see. There's nothing more terrifying than hearing multiple people get shot while you're under your desk and then hear the gunman reload. I had also taken issue with that because it's always that. You know, we can hear the gunman reloading. It's always that. But I think we're getting to a part that I really had. Uh, let's see. Uh, so that, okay, Davis later told the son that it was like a war zone, a scene that would be hard to describe for a while. I'm a police reporter. I write about this stuff, not necessarily to this extent, but shooting and death all the time, he said. But as much as I'm going to try to articulate how traumatizing it is to be hiding under your desk, you don't know until you're there and you feel helpless. Davis said he and others were hiding under their desk when the shooter stopped firing. Then police arrived and surrounded the shooter. This was another issue that I took. So, they just arrive and surround the shooter. There was no bean bags fired at him. There was no flashbang grenades. There was no, you see what I'm saying? They just surround him. So again, it was leaning back to these other mysterious shootings that we've had in the past at that time. But some of it still stands true because, uh, let's see, what's the part about the attorneys? They probably took that out because there was attorneys that were in the building. They said we didn't hear anything and didn't know anything was happening. Wait. All right, let's go back up. We'll scan down. Uh. David said, "You okay? I read that assignment." He heard another shot, he said, dived under co-worker's desk and curled up as, a, as small as he could. I dove under the desk, okay, fine. Uh, Gillespie said he heard one colleague scream, no, then a shot. 
Then another colleague's voice and another shot. I see. I kept thinking, I can't believe I'm going to die. I can't believe this. Gillespie said, um, that's a new person. He wasn't in the previous uh, version of this article. Uh, he ran to a nearby bank and screamed for people to call the cops. I want to get to these attorneys. Uh, received two patients both oh wait now here was another issue I took okay officials at the Maryland shock trauma center in Baltimore confirmed that the hospital treated at least one victim you see but there was 170 people in there and they said and the, and the header at that time said five people killed and uh, multiple others gravely injured was the language you see and so but then now we get to shock trauma it's one victim Um, County Executive Steve Shu said others were being treated at Anne Arundel Medical Center. All right. Then Laurel, Lauren Farquhar, a medical center spokeswoman, said the hospital received two patients, both with minor injuries, not from gunfire. So I took issue with that as well. All right. The injured employees were identified. We don't need to read those. Uh, we just want to get the details of the event itself. Uh, we're not reading anything by the orange tulip. We don't need it. Um, Rick Hunsell called. All right, he's okay. Well, here's another one. All right, this was got me too. Josh uh, McCarroll, a Capital Gazette photo photographer for 14 years started his day Thursday covering induction day at the Naval Academy at sunrise he was driving home to celebrate his daughter's birthday when capital when capital editor Rick Hunsell called see that was the other thing that I took because see sometimes I feel like that they try to over um, over emotionalize these stories and um, when you're looking through the prism of like you know potential conspiracy or something like that this stood out because it's like okay why do we need to know that you know he was driving home to celebrate his daughter's birthday what why is that why is that printed again you have a, a writer and editor a publisher everybody so it's there on purpose we question why he said he had heard there had been a shooting and he couldn't get in touch with anyone in the newsroom then he heard sirens my heart sank I knew police in SWAT gear carrying assault rifles cordoned off the area around the newsroom and closed uh, Bestgate Road outside the police tape McCaro and reporter Chase Cook called and texted friends and co-workers in search of answers Jim DeButts an editor wrote on Twitter that he quote was devastated and heartbroken he praised his colleagues work all right, so so they changed that because it said something else earlier. He praised the newspaper's work, like he was. And I was like, why is he praising the newspaper in the middle of a crisis? Like, why? What? There are no, there are no forty-hour weeks, no big paydays, just a passion for telling stories from our communities. The butts wrote, "We keep doing more with less. We find ways to cover." Okay, we don't need to read that. Governor or somebody. Okay. House Speaker don't need it. Okay, this is a shocker. Uh, that's still not what I'm looking for. Uh, Aaron, this is it. Aaron Smith and Randall Fisher of the Fisher Law Office were on the fourth floor at the time of the shooting, but they didn't hear or see anything. They learned of the assault when a colleague texted Smith. Now, I will tell you, I've not seen any footage of this. Like I say, I saw it on the TV when I was going to the kitchen, and but then I came to see what what was going on I've not seen any video and I'm always saying that in these cases they never one thing that sets up all these crisis actor theories and all that kind of stuff that you see on YouTube is because we don't ever see anything that reflects that something that a event went on and so that's why this stood out because they were on the fourth floor and they said they didn't see or hear anything uh, but they didn't hear or see anything and then in the previous article it said and 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 didn't know anything was happening
right. They flipped a desk over in front of the door of the law office and stayed there until SWAT arrived. Then they walked out of the building with their hands on their heads like everyone else. See, they've cleaned it up now because in the previous article, everybody, there was inconsistencies because there was, you saw, at one point they would tell you that people were, uh, took off their heels to, 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 to flee and then in the next thing it would say, well, they were, they walked out of the building. Oh man, I wish I had the original. Damn. I'm over it. Some employees remove oh here it is. Some employees remove high heels to prepare to prepare to flee the building. See, that wasn't there before. Others hid. One pulled two handguns out of his desk drawer for self defense. Now that I question because I'm like, how is it that you work any job? But here you are, you work at the Herald Gazette or the 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 Capital Gazette, why do you have guns in your desk drawer? And but wait, they, the statement clearly suggests that they were loaded because it said for self-defense. Can you have loaded guns in your desk at the Capital Gazette, everybody? Like that would be just be a standalone curiosity, forget the story that we're covering. Like, just divorce that from the story for a moment. Like, after all the dust clears, is somebody going to go back and go, why did you have two guns? I mean, thank God he did. But why did you have loaded guns? It, not just one, but two. I can't. Uh, more police arrived, and, then, and they all began filing out of the office. Foster said he and her said she and her employee tried to hold hands to comfort each other but were told by police to keep their hands in the air that also stood out to me because why is that there like I would not be doing that in the in, when my life is in danger and I'm trying to flee I can't more police arrived and they all began filing out okay that's uh, 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 you see it on the news and I'm over it, I'm over it. All right. So, uh, there's more information here, obviously. But, again, this phenomenon, and I've done the videos dedicated to just the, uh, the epidemic is the word I want here, of mass shootings in this country. And that the identity of these shooters is always someone who is white it's never an African person it's never a a a Native American it's never any it's never a Korean and all this kind of stuff you feel what I'm saying I mean the FBI their profile of a mass shooter is a white male of a certain age you see, that's just the damn truth. We don't have to like it, but that's the facts. That's the facts. You know, when we had the uh, the DC snipers, everybody was shocked and appalled, or shocked and clutching the pearls when we found out that it was two um, black dudes. Everybody. Everybody. And I shared with you guys in previous work that I actually was right next to the damn shooters at the stoplight everybody on Rockville Pike I was working for Xerox at the time and usually if there was a uh, a call up from Office Depot or Staples or something like that any of those accounts I would always get there before the store opened I always had you know a relationship with the with the store managers so that that was always possible because I wanted to be able to get in there and not just service the machine they were calling about but also service all their machines because in those places they have multiple machines and you don't want to have to keep going back so you're there you should check all the damn machines all right so I'm on Rockville Pike it's early in the morning like when that first ray of Sun is just coming across you know it's light enough but the Sun isn't up all the way yet literally it was it was like a dewy morning my voice is gone <clears throat> um it was like a dewy morning all right and the car that they ended up being caught in is not what we were looking for we were still looking for white box trucks 
so there was no traffic it was just me and them so when I was going to pull out on Brockville Pike, I'm going to be making a left out of Office Depot. Was it Office Depot or, or, or Staples? I think, it's, I think that's an Office Depot. Anyway, I'm going to make a left. So I need to cross traffic, you know, the lanes that are in front of me. I need to cross to the other, you know what I'm saying, to get to the two lanes that travel in the direction that I'm going. Well, I had to wait for their car to come past me. They were in the lane closest to the center. I made my left turn after they passed I made my left turn and went into the far right lane and we both ended up at the red light I saw Lee Malvin because my windows are tinted on Princess and their windows were tinted so but I could see Lee Malvo's afro and I could see it was two brothers in the car they took off faster than me you know not that they were speeding or driving erratic or anything I'm just saying they took off they went on before me when the light turned green I seen the New Jersey plates and I seen the hole in the damn trunk that we later learned was where they were firing at people from I was right next to the damn sniper and didn't know it but here's how I found out the day that they were caught and by the way where they were caught at was one exit up from where I used to get off to go home because I lived at that time I lived in Beltsville Maryland near the university near the near university I was right near university so I was near the university, near university. They never say the. It's, I was near university. So, and the one stop up from where I get off the freeway at, they had, there was a this rest stop where they were caught at. When I seen that car, I almost had a heart attack. And I started calling everybody. I was like, that's the car. I was right next to them. Oh my God. Oh yeah. And it was a big thing. You feel me? So, I don't know how I got off on that. <laughs> Anyways, I want to deal with Maximum Maxine. All right. Maxine waters everybody because this is the woman of the hour. And I also have a st personal story about Maxine waters. I met her uh, years ago, back in the 1990s. I met Maximum Maxine waters. And this is regard Maxine waters says she faced increased threats canceling two events. First, I want to share my story with you. Back in the 1990s, uh, I was living in California, and I lived in the valley, and I worked in the valley. Um, I lived in at that time. I was living. I was living in Reseda. Yeah, I was living in Reseda, and but I worked in Chadsworth. I worked for a communications firm, and there I had gotten a flyer that had been posted around town that she was going to be speaking at this church that was just near me. She was going to be at like Northridge church or something. Anyways, I had to go right past there going home. So I go, well, I have to go and meet her because I'm never in a room with anybody that's either famous or prominent in any way. I've never been in a room with anybody like that and I don't meet them. Like I always meet the person. I always tell anybody, if you're someplace with me and there's somebody famous there, you will meet them it will happen because I am that dude I'm that dude anyway so I was like well I'm gonna go meet Maxine right so I get to the church she was sitting up on the dais um, after she spoke and then um, and I'm sitting in the pews well now I'm there to meet her you know so I make my way over to one of the pews that sits across from where she's sitting up on the dais and I'm mouthing to her like Maxine I you like purposely like being inaudible not only because we're there's another speaker and we're in the church but I also want her to have to lean and focus on me and that's exactly what she did so then she waved me on up there so I went up and I sat for 15 minutes and talked to Maxine, Max, Maxine Waters and one of the things we talked about was how she ha how proud I was of how she had been on the front line um, with being in the in the hot spots when the Rodney King thing went on you feel me like this lady goes back you guys I don't even know how old she is Maxine Waters got to be like 5,000 years old now that I think let's see carry the one wait carry the one that yeah it looks up maybe about 6,000 yeah but that is a feisty lady she don't age she's loud she's fearless and 
she's not perfect and she's a Christian but I have great respect for this lady I do because I know her and I've seen her in action like real time you know and um yeah she's just been at it for a long time and you'll recall that last year she went viral for one of her senate um uh investigations or whatever it was one of the capitol hill panel where they people got to sit in front of you and not recall stuff and she was the one that was like you know i'm reclaiming my time i'm reclaiming my time <laughs> and also she has lips like gladys knight that's the other thing that's distinct about her because y'all know gladys got them lips that are just like pillows you feel me and that's the same lips that maxine waters has same lips same ones anyway she could not have been more gracious and um and i just really enjoyed my exchange with her you know but this is what's going on now okay maxine waters said thursday she's been wait let me increase this she is seeing an increase in threats since she made controversial contra controversial how do they say this controversy but how do they say controversial controversial Controvers no con controversial I don't know how they anyway comments last week encouraging protesters to heckle and harass members of the orange tulips um, cabinet in public spaces all right the California Democrat canceled two scheduled appearances in Alabama and Texas which are the center of racism in the south this weekend after saying she got threatening messages and quote hostile mail at her office including one very serious death threat on Monday from an individual in Texas so the fact they say individual I assume they have some idea of who this is uh, but I want to get to the main part all right including one very serious okay as as the pre, quote as the president has continued to lie and falsely claim that I encourage people to assault this supporter or that I encourage people to assault his supporters while also offering a veiled threat that I should quote be careful even more in, even more individuals are leaving threatening messages and sending hostile mail to my office she said in a statement that was my main point about this whole damn thing because this is something that his ass should be arrested for do you understand you're the president if you're making statements that compromise the state the safety of any citizen that is a problem that's a problem I'll give you an example so you can see the double standard of this devil remember when uh, Farrakhan had the 10 10 15 March everybody and remember it was uh, j uh, justice or else how many panels did we see on TV wanting to is that a threat is he is that, you know and I'll give you another one or is uh, DJ Khaled says another one <laughs> another one um wait let me think now um oh um oh who is it who is it let me think okay I can't think but I will give you another example of what I'm trying to think of are you if you if you're not familiar with move MOVE it was an organization back in the 1980s they were kind of like Black Panther ish all right you can just put in move the move organization and be prepared to sit for many hours because it, you will be so intrigued and engrossed that you won't be able to um, you know leave the information but it's the perfect example to cite what I'm trying to say about this orange tulip and Maxine Waters because they went there and they bombed our people from the sky everybody bombed civilians in this bitch all right with bombs from the sky set the house on fire they knew there was women and children in the house 
and they still set the place on fire and they ended up dying but there was some there was uh one or two survivors i can't remember how many i think it was it wasn't even more than that but the one sister that i'm trying to and i can't call her name right now one of the they didn't have anything on her you know what she ended up going to jail for inciting a riot hmm and she was the victim they charged her with inciting a riot and rioting now isn't that what this orange tulip is doing by threatening a congresswoman and forget she's a congresswoman just the fact that she's a citizen and a woman at that forget that just the fact that he's threat he's that he's veiling any type of threat to a citizen isn't that a problem huh should he be jailed for rioting huh huh you see what I'm saying? The double fucking standard. Double damn standard. Double ass standard. And we pray that Maxine will be safe, but what will they say now if, and she's saying she's had to cancel events because of death threats, what will, won't the blood be on his hands if even a hair on this lady's head is touched? I ask you. I ask you. I can't I can't you know and oh by the way he can sit up on his perch and call um, NFL players sons of bitches um, let's see if he's made a statement about this shooting oh, actually they did say he had a quote and I just went past it because remember I didn't want to read it because I don't read any statements from him let's see now what the orange tulip had to say uh, where's the orange tulip Right now. Ah, oh, there it is. All right. The orange tulip wrote on Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Some say you can't. You can't step to the mic and make a, a statement. Hmm. Uh, the orange tulip wrote on Twitter that he had been briefed on the shooting. Quote: My thoughts and prayers. But you hear everybody saying they're over thoughts and prayers now. Remember, even Kelly Clarkson said it at the. What did she host recently? The Billboard Awards, was it? And there had been yet another one of these damn shootings. I forget which one it was now. Was it Florida? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though. Y'all know. Anyways, and she was like, she's, we're over thoughts and prayers. You know? She said, anyway, he goes, my thoughts and prayers are with the victims of the, and their families. Thank you all. Thank you you to all of the first responders who are currently on the scene uh, well imagine if Obama had tweeted after any major event instead of stepping to the mic and being seen and they would say you know it's the president's you know it's his responsibility to to calm the country in events like this and where is the president and this and the third but he can tweet and that's fine that's it Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's right. There's a double stand. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm tch, crazy. I'm tch, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. Anyways, I'm over it. I'm past it. Um. All I know is that nothing there happened to Maxine Waters. That I know. That I know. Because she is beloved in many parts of Los Angeles. You know, at least she was when I lived in California and all the years that I've even known of her existence you know I mean this is this woman goes and gets in the face of gang members as if she's like their mother and stuff you feel me it don't matter if they crip or blood <clears throat> so she's well respected and uh but like I said I just don't see how the president of the nation can make threats to a citizen or in her language veiled threats you know and then that's not a problem say what you want to say about Obama we had a statesman in that office for eight years a statesman an adult you understand an intellectual someone who was honorable 
at the very least I'm over it click the link down below everybody to go over and join me on Black Junction TV um, when I started this campaigning with that um, it was we had I had 52 people um, I'm pleased to say that that number has moved to 137 but it's not enough I need all my people now we're at 140 all right let's continue to climb let us continue to climb you know um, so that eventually it will be because once once all my people are over there at least the vast majority I feel like once we get at least a thousand people over there we're done <clears throat> we're done we're done so there's nearly 5,000 people on just this channel and there's almost 900 on the other channel the Jedi so we should be able to achieve this everybody we should be able to achieve this let's get it done let's get it done I'll see you soon this is the Jedi